In this video, I'm going to talk about my favorite language in general and particularly my favorite language to learn. And I'll explain why I love this language. And to create a bit of intrigue and not to reveal the name of the language right away, I'll tell you some specifications about this language. So, this is a very hard language to learn. You need many years to master this language because you have to learn thousands of different characters written in a very different and specific way. Can you imagine what this language is? Exactly, it's Chinese. I must say that I started learning Chinese uh, two years ago and I didn't expect to ever learn Chinese in my life. It was um, accidentally, practically, I found an online course and I decided to try a course. And then I started studying Chinese and I absolutely fell in love with this language. It's a beautiful language. Besides, it's a difficult language, so it makes your brain work, which is the best. But in this video, I don't want to talk about my subjective perception of Chinese. I want to focus more on the scientific side of learning Chinese. And here I want to touch the subject that I absolutely love, which is psycholinguistics and especially brain activity. If you're interested in language learning or if you've ever studied philology, linguistics or maybe neuroscience, then you know that we have two hemispheres left and right and each hemisphere has their own functions. For example, it's believed that the left hemisphere is responsible for analytical interpretation, for logic, for the analysis, for sequencing, for mathematics, for facts and for language. The right hemisphere is responsible for creativity, intuition, feelings, imagination, daydreaming, and arts. So language learning and processing is believed to be dominated by the left hemisphere because this side of the brain involves logic and analytical thinking. However, in a study published in 2015 entitled Cross-Language Differences in the Brain Network Subserving Intelligible Speech, it was found that in Chinese speech comprehension there were neural dynamics in the left and right hemispheres. The results were compared with the English language and both English and Mandarin Chinese showed activity in the left hemisphere. However, Mandarin Chinese showed also dynamics in the right hemisphere. And of course it has to do with the fact that Mandarin Chinese is a tonal language. And as I said, the right hemisphere is responsible for music through registering different pitches and tones. And Mandarin Chinese is a tonal language, so it's similar to interpreting music, which involves the right hemisphere. Of course, if we talk about tones in general and the use of tones in different languages, we have to admit that in English we also use tones, for example, to communicate emotional information. However, in Mandarin Chinese, tones are essential to differentiate the meaning of a word because the same sound using different tones can mean completely different things. So tones are crucial to understand the Chinese speech. Based on the conclusions made in this study, we can deduce that maybe all tonal languages imply both hemispheres, left and right. However, as far as I know, so far it was the only study conducted on the neural activity of the right hemisphere and they haven't tested yet other tonal languages. But I guess this study will be repeated in other languages as well and we will receive more information about that. So in my opinion, the fact that the Chinese language activates both hemispheres, left and right, is super important. Because imagine, if you're studying Chinese, both hemispheres of your brain are working. There is no need to study music or arts just by learning Chinese, even if you consider yourself an analytical person. I think it's a huge advantage of learning Chinese in comparison with learning other languages and I encourage you to study Chinese if you haven't studied yet. Even just to train your brain if you're not thinking of speaking Chinese or traveling to China. Anyways, I think it's hugely beneficial for you. But of course I have to correct myself when I said about not learning music or arts. I also believe that learning music and arts is essential for our brain activity. And for example, if you consider yourself an analytical person, you like mathematics and physics, 
why not try to study some music or art and vice versa if you are an artistic person you like drawing and painting why not study some mathematics or logic in this way you will train your brain and become smarter that's it what i wanted to say today thank you very much for watching me till the end and see you very soon bye bye